Hey guys, today's session we shall deal with the structure of plasmodium, plasmodium parasite. Plasmodium causes malaria in human beings. Plasmodium exists in four different types of forms. Plasmodium vivax, plasmodium ovale, plasmodium malaria and plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium being a digenic parasite exists both in the humans as well as the mosquitoes. Plasmodium exists as plasmodium has two different morphological features which need to be dealt with before going into the life cycle. The first one being the tropozoid, second one being the sporozoid form. Tropozoid structure, it is globular in structure and externally covered by a double membrane structure called the plasma lemma. Plasma lemma almost equal to plasma membrane because it's not yet, but it's not yet highly developed like a plasma membrane structure. And it contains some endoplasmic reticulum structures here and there. And this is a plasma lemma, productive in the layer, productive layer. And then the center consists of vesicle-like structures called the Golgi complex, and its central prominent nucleus, the dynamic center one, and it contains mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. In addition to this, <coughs> it does contain some food vacuoles, storage gran granaries type. So these tropocyte forms exist in the RBCs. They live in the RBC cells or seen in the RBC. So what they do, they feed on the hemoglobin and kind of the hemozoin granules. These hemozoin granules are the food materials or the raw materials for their survival. These are hemozoin granules. Now, as discussed earlier, the tropocyte forms are characterized by two distinct features. The first one being its actively feeding stage and it is seen or live inside the RBC of human beings. So this is all the structure of a tropozoid form. And now let us move the structure of sporozoid form. Sporozoid is the most infectious stage of parasite, uh, the plasmodium parasite. It is a spindle shape or sickle shape in structure and the morphology. So this actually aids in the wriggling movement of the parasite. It's externally covered by a pellicle, same like the plasma lemma. And it is actually actually opens by the tip by a micropyle structure called the mouth. Micropyle. From the mic on the mouth or the micropyle, you can see two secret organelles, uh, gland-like structures, secret organelles, which are completely lytic in nature. And these lytic secretions actually help these parasites to bore into the liver parenchyma cells. So starting from the microbial structures again, now there are some microtubules like uh, filaments which from which hang from the microbial structure and these structures are called the microtubules and these microtubules aid in the wriggling movement. Now these both are interconnected with each other, the secretory organelles and the microtubules, they are helping with each other. It contains the central prominent nucleus over here and then it has contained mitochondria and, and then some endoplasmic reticulum structures here and there and along with the cytoplasm structure, protoplasm. And this complete structure over here is called the apical curve, which is the front part or the projectile part which pours into the parenchyma cells. And that's, that's all for now, guys. Uh, we shall deal with the life cycle of malaria parasite in the next video in detail. Thank you.